Hi guys, I'm Lisa and I'm back with another video. Today I'm here to do my the monthly recommendations video for January. And January's theme is historical fiction, so I'll come up I've come up with 10 books that I'd like to share with you that I've read and really enjoyed. I mean, historical fiction is not my most read genre at all, but it is a genre that I've explored a lot more during the last couple of years. Um and I plan to definitely read a lot more from that genre in the future. Um, so I'm also looking forward to see others, other recommendations video to sort of see what other books I should maybe pick up. And before I get into the monthly recommendations list, I'd like to say that the monthly recommendations is hosted by Trina from Between Chapters and Kayla from Kayla Rain. And I'll leave a link to their channels down below, as well as the Goodreads group, where you can find the topics and all of the other participants in this monthly recommendations. So coming in as number 10 on my list is The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. This is a book that's set in the 1700s Amsterdam, and it follows this girl called, called Patronella, or Nella as is her nickname, uh, as she moves to live with her husband, Johannes. Um, when she moves there, Johannes is kind of distant towards her, even though they're married, and so she has to figure a thing, figure out how to spend her time um, in another way. Um, so everything changes for her um, when she receives this wedding present, which is a lot sort of cabinet-sized dollhouse the exact replica of the house that they are themselves are living in. So she figures she wants to find someone who can craft some dolls and things to put in the dollhouse. And some mysterious things are starting to happening, as well as things are happening around in her life with um, with Johannes, Johannes' sister and other people in her life. I really, really enjoyed the writing. I also thought the the whole overall story was good, but there are some plot holes at times, I believe. Um, and that's why it doesn't get like a top position on my ranking. I think I gave it a 4 stars or 3.5 stars when I read it. Um, it is a book that I really enjoyed reading because the, the language was really re beautiful. Um, and I definitely recommend it if you like a very beautifully written novel. and. It's sort of magical realism because of this miniature thing. A thing sort of happens when she gets the miniature figurines. Number nine on my list is going to be The Girl from Everywhere by Heidi Haley. And this is the fantasy time travel novel, um, so it's not exactly historical, um, but it is. The, most of this book is set in the 1800s Hawaii. It follows this girl called Nyx, who is a time traveler and she sort of grew up on this ship with her dad. And it's not an ordinary ship because the ship is used for time traveling to any place they want to go uh, at any time. And the way that they travel is by drawing very, very accurate maps um, of the places that they want to visit. Uh, it has to be really, really accurate for it to work. On this ship, though, there is also a very trusted friend called Kashmir, and I really, really enjoyed the time travel aspect of this. I thought it was really well thought out. The whole thing with the map thing was really interesting. Um, and I've also not read a lot of books set on Hawaii, so that was really fun to read about as well. I don't know if they're completely accurate, I haven't really checked it, but I really felt like it was very true to Hawaiian history. I enjoyed the characters a lot. Uh, I thought Nyx was really interesting and I definitely think that Kashmir was an interesting character as well. Um, I liked the bond that her and Nyx had and so I ended up giving this a four stars and I really enjoyed the story. Book number eight on my list is going to be The Medium by C.J. Archer. This is this is the first book in the Emily Chambers Spirit Medium Trilogy. It's a quite long title. This is set in, a book set in the 1800s uh, in London and it follows this girl called Emily Chambers who can see spirits. And one day she meets this 
ghost <laughs> who called Jacob before because he's been unable to cross over after his death several months ago. So she has to sort of figure out what happened there because there might be something else to it. I really enjoyed this story. There was a lot of twists and turns that I didn't expect. And it was fun um, reading a historical novel um, with a paranormal twist. I really enjoyed that. And I should get to the next of the books in the series, but I haven't really gotten around to read the second or third book in the series. So we'll see uh, when I get there. Coming in as number seven on my list is going to be Secrets of a Sonite by Lisa Clavers, the first book in the Wallflower series. This follows um, a group of girls that doesn't really have any that wants to call them. So they're sort of the wallflower. At the balls they always sit on um, by the walls because for, for whatever reason they're not as popular as the other aristocrats around London. It's set in the 1800s and, and these girls they sort of um, get together to try and sit, do everything they can to sit each other up. It has a lot of humor and wit that I really like uh, in the story. Um, there was a lot of things that I didn't see coming and then there was a lot of things that I probably had predicted but I overall really enjoyed this book and Lisa Clavers has a really fun way of writing and I definitely want to read the next books in the series at some point. Coming in as number six on my list is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is a World War II set, mostly in France but also partly in Germany. We follow this girl called Marie Laura who very early in this book turns blind so she can't, obviously can't see anything but she learns a way to sort of get around to the city by having a very very small three-dimensional map so she knows how to get around and one day the Nazis occupy Paris where they live so they have to flee to this other place and that's basically where she ends up growing up and then we follow a boy named Werner who is sort of working for the Nazis even though he doesn't really want to he's taken in to sort of be their radio maker so they can sort of find out where the um, opposition people lives. Their story sort of intermingle in a way and I'm not gonna say too much about it because I think the story itself is best if it's told without you knowing too much about the story. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. It was very very heart-wrenching at times but also really um, gave you a feel of how it was to live back in the World War II area. I enjoyed it and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Coming in as number 5 on my list is Unending Devotions by Jodie Hedlund, I think she's called. <laughs> it's the first book in the Michigan Brides trilogy and it's set in 1883 in Boston. It, it follows this girl called Lily Young who was separated from her sister when she was very young. So she's made it sort of a mission to try and a figure way to figure a way to find her again. Um, she sort of searches these um, everywhere while traveling along. She searches logging camp and camps and towns, posing as a photographer's assistant, and um, she ends up in Harrison, Michigan, where she meets this boy called Connell, who is the is running this. Um, logging company firm thing um, after having taken over by a father. He's, he's sort of trying to gain his father's respect even though he's always looked down upon him and always favored the other brother who is a real horrible person. Anyway, they sort of meet and then things start to happen. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I thought it was really well written. It's actually a Christian fiction and for once I didn't really mind it. Um, I thought that the way they added the Christianity um, was actually really well done uh, without being too over the top. So I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I haven't read on in the trilogy, which is a case for a lot of my series, but I really enjoyed it. And I think I want to read it, the next books in the series, but I think they follow another character. Coming in as number 4 on my list is Comanche Moon by Catherine Anderson, the first book in her Comanche series. It follows this Comanche who's called Hunter of the Wolf. He is uh, given a prophecy about this girl that he feel like he has to honor, so he sort of 
abducts this girl called Loretta who is an orphan and has sort of been living in terror since, ever since her parents were murdered by the Comanches. But when sort of he takes her, he, her in as a captive, he sort of explains everything and yeah, it, it's heart-wrenching, it's crazy, it's very graphic at times and horrible at times and but I thoroughly enjoyed all of this book. It was really, really well written. And yeah, I think the reason I haven't continued was because what the characters got, went through. Um, it was very explicitly detailed. And while I don't mind that because I think it adds to the story, it was definitely a little hard to read at times, but I really, really thought it was really, really, really well done. Um, so I definitely gave this one a five out of five stars. Coming in as number three on my list is going to be A Client of the Cave Bear by Sean M. Awell. It's the first book in the Earth Children series. It's set all the way back in the Stone Age. It follows this girl called Ayla who loses her parents when she's just a baby. And then this clan takes her in, who's known as the Clan of the Cave Bear. They take her in even though she looks a lot different than them. She is taller, she has light hair, blue eyes, whereas they are, has flat heads and all of that. Um, so she's looked down upon because they think she's ugly and there's a lot of things going on that's really difficult to read about, but it's really, really a really, really great book as well. I listened to this in audio, I think that helped me along a lot because it's a really long book. Um, I, I don't want to say too much about this book because I think it's best going into it not knowing a lot about the plot and it sort of seemed realistic um, that this could have been the way that things happened back then. But I, I feel like it was um, easy to tell that you'd done a lot of research um, about his about that time period. Coming in as number two on my list is actually surprisingly um, My Lady Jane by Cynthia Han, Brady Ashton and Jodie Meadows. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I thought it was really, really fun. It had, I listened to the audio, which made it a lot more fun, I think. Uh, the narrator was really, really good at capturing the humor of the story. And it follows this boy called Edward, who is the king of England at the time. And he is told that he has three to six months left of his life so and he's a very young prince so she, he doesn't really have an heir and so he has to figure out who's going to be the ruler of England after he's gone and then he's advised by someone else that Lady Jane who is her, his cousin I think or niece I, I forgot exactly the family relations he's advised to let her marry this man called Gifford and she will be the queen of England and the ruler of England. And I just really enjoyed the take of this. Um, it's a retelling of Mer of Lady Jane when she was a queen for a week or something before she was murdered. And they take I like the I like how they they, they made this um <laughs> It was a lot of fun following and it definitely would have become a lot, a, a much better story <laughs> had it been this that happened um, back in back in time. Um, but I like the fantasy, fantasy elements that was thrown into this book as well um, with everyone being able to have this uh, spiritual animal part of them and being able to sort of shift into this animal when at certain times and I really enjoyed this um, I thought the three characters were really really interesting to follow both Edward, Gifford and La Lady Jane were super interesting characters and I loved following their development through the whole book you sort of saw everything from each of their point of view so they shifted between the three point of view and even though there are three authors um, working together they found a way to really make it work um, and I really enjoyed it. And coming in as number one on my list is The Duke and I by Julia Quinn, uh, the first book to the Bridgerton series. I thoroughly loved this book. It was also one of those lighthearted historical romance books, but um, it follows this girl called Daphne who 
um, is the oldest daughter of the British Island family and she's just getting around to starting coding life. She has a lot of friends that are male friends who they want to talk to her as a friend but they don't really want to be with her as a husband. Um, and then we have Simon and Bassett who is the son of a duke and he's been treated horribly over, all over his childhood because he was um, he had a hard time really talking, he was stuttering a lot and uh, because of that his father disowned him and just treated him really horribly. But he worked really hard to sort of gain his father's respect without that happening at all. And then finally when he got older he definitely didn't want any part of the being a duke and continuing his father's name because Simon is friends with Daphne's older brother. They, Simon and Daphne meet and they sort of decide to form a friendship sort of thing that they have to pretend to court each other in order to, for Daphne's reason, plays a gain interest from the other guys that she's actually court, courting material. <laughs> and for Simon's um, point of view, he doesn't really want to spend his time fending off women. So they decide they, they can use each other in this way. and then Things happen and they are obviously starting to feel some romantic feelings towards each other. I thoroughly loved this book. It was so much fun to follow. Um, the, the, the Julia Quinn as a writer was really, really good. And I liked that every chapter started with sort of a newspaper clipping about something, some rumors going around town. <laughs> and I thought it was, those were really, really fun to read as well. So these were all of the books on my list. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books and what did you think of them or do you have any historical fiction books that you would like to recommend to me? Let me know about that in the comments down below as well. And I'll see you in my next video hopefully very, very soon. Goodbye.